Adobe Premiere Pro CC allows you to work with VR video media directly. You can edit sequences, apply special effects, and output media files tagged as VR so players will correctly identify them. To follow along, copy the assets that accompany this tutorial to your Creative Cloud account. Once your media is stitched together as equi rectangular video, you can use it as you would any other footage. Here I've got a VR video clip in my project panel, and just for speed, I'm going to drag this onto the new item button to create a sequence based on its settings. So my sequence now matches the frame rate and frame size and so on. And I'm just going to scroll up a little so we can see the thumbnail and the audio waveform a little better, and let me zoom in a little too. Again, this footage will behave like any other footage you're used to working with in Premiere Pro, but we have one specific challenge, and that's that this VR media has been flattened from a sphere into a rectangle. And that's fine, but actually, most of the interesting action in this particular shot is probably happening around the edges. So what do you do if you want to be able to change the view that's at the center of the screen? Well, Premiere Pro has a special VR viewing mode in both the program monitor and the source monitor. You can get access to this mode by going to the settings for the program monitor. For example, here we've got VR video enable, but there's also a dedicated button. And let's add that to the set of controls we have at the moment for the program monitor. I'm going to click on the button editor here, and I'm going to grab this toggle VR video display and drop it down to the bottom of the program monitor and click OK. There's a similar button available for the source monitor. Now that I've got this button available, I can simply click it to enable the VR view mode. I should think this makes sense to you pretty much right away. I can click and drag in this new monitor to see different angles. I can click and type on the vertical and horizontal axes. I can click and drag as well. I've got navigators along these edges, and there's a little pot control to make faster adjustments. There we go. If I right-click on this picture and go into the VR video settings, we've got a few interesting options. And first at the top, we've got the frame layout. Now, this is monoscopic media. It's not two cameras side by side shooting stereoscopic to give us the appearance of 3D. But if we had shot stereoscopic, you've got the option to specify over under or side by side media. If I choose one of these, you'll notice that I can now specify if I'm seeing the left or right eye view. And in addition, I've got this anaglyph option. If I switch that on for just a moment, now again, this isn't really stereoscopic media, but I'll switch that on and click OK. Immediately, you can see I've now got this red and green combined effect. And if you have the right glasses for this, it gives you a sense of the stereoscopic depth if you don't have a VR headset. So it's really useful to get a sense of what's going on with your media. I'm just going to go back into the settings for my VR video, and I'm going to change this back to monoscopic. And I just want to run over these additional options. You'll notice that we've got a captured view, horizontal and vertical, and a monitor view, horizontal and vertical. Now, the captured view controls allow you to specify the full width of the image and height of the image. Now, we're working with 360 media here, but you could be working with just very wide panoramic content. And you can specify that so you get the right view in the monitor. But then separately, you've got a monitor view control, which allows you to mimic various different VR headsets. So if you know how wide the view is for a particular headset that you're producing the content for, you can specify here. And just to illustrate this, I'm going to click into to this uh, horizontal view control, and I'm going to type in 150 and click OK, and immediately you can see the result. I get the same options here. I can click and drag and change the viewpoint. And by the by, this is a live viewer. So if I press the space bar to play, you can see the action taking place in the picture. So once you're happy with your VR media, you've produced your sequence, and you're ready to share it with the world, the next thing to do, of course, is export a file. I'm going to press Control M, that's Command M on Mac OS, and I'm going to bring up the Export Settings dialog. And I just want to show you an option at the very bottom here. 
Under the video tab, in the video settings here, we've got this VR video heading. And under that, we've got video is VR. If I just enable this, I'm gonna drag a little bit further down. You can see we've got these familiar monoscopic and stereoscopic options. Now, if you enable this option, when you create the media, it's gonna have a metadata tag that identifies it as VR video. And that means that when you play it back, your player will correctly identify it and correctly display it. So for example, if you upload it to YouTube and put it on the 360 media channel, it'll come up correctly and people will see it as VR. So that's VR workflows in Adobe Premiere Pro CC.